So let's uh, f- let's first. I want to say thank you that you accept my invitation for our uh, late talk in the night today. <laughs> That's okay. Not a problem. It's a pleasure. So the things uh, today, I'm. I'll try to go a bit deeper inside your spirit with my okay. first question. For example, it will be uh, how you always get inspiration from and what is driving you always forward to create always great images what we see on your portfolio um well i think it cut off a little bit there but i think i understood so basically what what is my inspiration and what well when i say (laughs) this inspiration is a tricky one because it's it's inspiration is basically the fruit of all your experience so Mm -hmm. everything you've experienced in life Yeah. culminates into something and that's inspiration so you can be you, you you can be a genius and be inspired very quickly without having a lot of years in your life but the older you get and the the freer that you are in spirit the more inspiration you have i mean i studied architecture so a lot of my inspiration comes from that but at the same time it's very much influenced by concept art and uh guys that i work for as well as Bionics, mm-hmm. uh, you know very well. Uh, yeah. They're a major inspiration, Luxigon. I mean, all these other companies are quite inspiring, but it's it's always important to remember, like, especially with us and the things that we do at Arc, you know, and I say us because we're a collective, and every time I get asked to speak, I I, I, I should also mention that we, we have a team, and mm-hmm. team is a big part of that, and that we think as a global collective. But in terms of inspiration, I would say we draw a lot of inspiration from movies, from ev- from lots of things outside mm-hmm. of um, of the art viz world. But mostly, it's it's basically movies, paintings, uh, classical painting, uh, concept art. It's everywhere, really. Yeah. I mean, even now, I was just going for a stroll, and it's an amazing day here in England. Mm-hmm. So it's the three times a year that we actually get really good weather. <laughs> yeah. And I was just in the park, and it's it's amazing if you just see how the so the the slight mist that you get at certain times of day at certain times of year. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's even incredible that I've noticed because we moved office at the beginning of this year, and just seeing how the sun actually goes around the office and how it sets in in a different part now compared to you know six months ago. All these things you can draw inspiration. I mean, it's 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 infinite, really. So I guess, I mean, I, I don't really know if I responded to your question, but it's 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 very varied in in the ways that we draw our inspiration, and we we must not forget that every project, every everything we work on has its own constraints, and the clients sometimes are inspiring themselves. I mean, it's we're very lucky in that aspect, and I think that. I mean, clients are also a big part of making the firms. I mean, we're we're a very collaborative bunch, and lots of inspiration all comes also comes from the client side. And I, I guess that's the many things where we join. Uh-huh. <laughs> you just you just threw me into this conversation straight away. But um, yeah, that's that's what I th- I th- I feel and think. Calvin. Yeah, the, the the last parts of, from your answer was really uh, interesting. What you said, it's according the uh, the client, the the client inspiration you're getting from. So you believe that, um, let's say, the client um, attitude and the client approach is also important in your workflow, right? Yeah, I mean. This is the most important thing at the end of the day. We're, we're human, and I'm always stressing this, uh, the humanity, and I think that's a lot to do with my way of being as well. We're, we're human beings at the end of the day, and we all have to collaborate with each other for a greater good, and our greater good is to deliver an amazing product, and that's what the client wants. Yeah. So what happens is we, we create these synergies with the client where we try and understand, and at the same time, the client understands that it's an open process and that their input is also really welcome so i guess that when, once you have that 
kind of going it is really interesting uh, to to see where where it leads up to and that that also offers openness to to the people we're collaborating with mm -hmm. so I, I think i know i hear many people going like ah oh, i'm sure as soon as i said these words some mm -hmm. people were probably thinking in their mind yeah right uh that's because you're lucky and you got x and y z client mm -hmm. uh, my clients never let me do this <laughs> and I think no, we we all have constraints at, at the end of the day, and everyone has them. Um, and we're not like we're going to do it our way or the highway. We're not like this. But we we also try and kind of find those synergies. I don't like to say educated client. The clients have studied many years. Mm -hmm. uh, many many of them they have great experience in what they do. And I think especially in the archives, well, there's always this thing against the client or this. And I don't think we, we go in that direction. We just try and grab what we can, and we try and do the best we can. Of course, not all times will be as successful um, as, as they should be, but I guess that um, once once you do create these synergies and you do understand where they're coming from and they understand where you're coming from, that you can really draw a lot of inspiration as well. So yes, it's, it's like I like to say, it's a gathering various experiences in your life that culminate in this moment of creation i think that's inspiring that's a great quote yeah <laughs> you said it nice it sounds great really so my next question will be um as some of your next steps in the future what more you'd like to improve in your projects in your images what is your yeah. inside desire of um, it's, creating? It's interesting. I get asked this a lot of times. It's really? like the third, third uh -huh. time in two or three weeks. It's like, where do you want, where <laughs> where do you want you know, to go? <laughs> yeah, where do you want to go? I, I think at the moment we have a lot of plans. I don't want to reveal everything just yet, but um, we have a lot of plans to, to develop RQ9 and grow RQ9. We're now... We're now basically seven, six, seven people, so it's 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 a, been a growing process, and you know, like everyone else, it's gone through various hurdles, and mm -hmm. it's uh, having a business is a you know it's a tricky yeah. thing. We've had people that stole our assets, workers done this. Anyway, it's a <laughs> a lot has happened. Trust me, if I open if I open the tap, <laughs> yeah. and you heard a lot has happened, but you you take it, you know, you take it with a pinch of salt, and you go forward. Mm -hmm. And I think at the moment we we have a lot of projects. We want to continue the growth of where we've gotten, but we always want to make sure you ensure that the quality also stays there. We want to keep developing our work. We want to also look to other technologies. There's a lot of things we can do. I mean, what we do, I mean, painting's been around for th thousands of years, right? You know, since the Neanderthals or something, we've been painting on caves mm -hmm. and we've been expressing ourselves. So I don't ever think we've ever dominated this form of art. We're, we're still kind of, you know, geniuses like Picasso, Salvador Dali, uh, many others, Leonardo da Vinci, just to, to name a few. They've, they've probably master this they're geniuses but we have a lot to master still and a lot to learn so i think we always want to improve what we're doing the way we're doing it and i think that this is basically the future is always to continue to improve uh, get better what we're doing deliver a better pro product but also enjoy what we're doing so i think there's it's it's a funny thing because sometimes artists they'll enjoy a lot what they're doing in a certain time and then after a while it gets to be a bit monotonous and this is where I think the innovation and the, the challenging yourself also is important and where you can really try and go that extra step to also keep yourself motivated and know that you you've got a lot to learn and a lot to do mm -hmm. and this is also great when you have a collective I know there's a lot about this uh, single at least in concept art there's a lot of the the notion of this single freelancer who's at home doing his work this is fantastic. I've I've done it as well, and I'm sure many many of your people listening, you yourself as well, we've all done this at one stage, and it's you know it's it's great and it's a, a learning process. But it's sometimes you you get to a point where it's like okay, I'd really like to try and be with some other people. I mean, even we have the internet, and you can always chat and spend the day. But physically, there's a a lot to be said about being next to someone, seeing how they do it, understanding the, the, their presence and how they do things. So I guess to, to be short and succinct, I think at the end of the day, it's it's all about 
Mm. Our growth, but connected with quality. I think that is the most important. We don't want to have a studio with 50 artists and be making... Not to say you can't do that, because there are many great examples around the world. I mean, yeah. the guys who started this all, you know, Neoscape, D-Box, Hayes Davidson, all these big names who, you know, they, mm. they, they have a lot of artists and a lot of experience. And they, they've been out there and just gone that extra mile and, and they've grown with it and still continue to produce great stuff but i think that is kind of where we want arky nine to to end up to to have a, a sustained growth of quality and workflow huh. um yeah i like all the things you said uh, regarding the growth of each uh, artist uh, i mean since the beginning of his career and so on but if someone is just starting, what will be your highest recommendation according to the tool or um, whatever it is? I mean, should someone start working in, in famous studio or just pushing at home? <laughs> what will be your, it's a zero for first advice. Ah, uh, Kali. That's, that's such a tricky one. I think the my most important advice would be to actually do it, to to do mm. things. Mm. <laughs> this mm. reminds me of that video on YouTube. I just saw one of the guys say, "Do it, just do it," and it's 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 true. I mean, to to evolve, first you have to do. You know, I used to watch a lot of tutorials. I remember, I recall quite well doing a lot of tutorials as everyone, and and I remember actually seeing them. And okay. It's great seeing the next one, but it's not until you actually start creating and do, making the errors that you start learning. And I think the most important thing, whatever you want to do, whatever your idea is for the future, is to start practicing and start doing it. I always have this, the key to, to actually being good at what you do is practicing. Uh, is practicing thinking about it. It's not just... Uh, it's not doing things for the sake of doing things so it doesn't mean like go out follow a tutorial and you've done the tutorial no it's actually doing the tutorial but um, harnessing that tutorial for your own your own creation so um, once you have your own creation you start thinking about okay these constraints are all different from the other project how can I resolve them and I think that that is super important whether you go to a big studio you go to a small studio mm. I guess that depends on each person and and the way they feel i think my my experience was to i, I can only speak from mine because it's the one i know yeah, but yeah. i'm I, I i started in architecture and generally got around to to being in the 3d part and then more and more 3d by myself and then i went to came to london i i went to a few studios i worked in the olympics i mean it really depends. In large studios, you can learn a lot, uh, but sometimes you can be stuck on one thing a longer time than in a smaller studio where you can get a lot of things. Um, but at the same time, in the larger studio, you might be exposed to different types of technology. So it really depends on where you want to go, I think. it's. Uh, I can't really recommend one or the other. I think that the main thing should be to actually do the best work and then naturally that will lead you to the path of where you need to go uh, i think it's a it's a natural evolution and you, you, the more the better you get the more you start thinking okay i i'm good at this these guys are good i'd like to go there to be better and understand that process i think that happened as well when i came to london quite a few years ago and and wanted to work with xyz company and really yeah and really improve and learn and i think that that is really my advice, I think, mm -hmm. in, in regards to that. Nice. So if we try to notice your workflow in percentage, how will you um, <laughs> how will tell I mean what is the percentage of 3D work, post production? Because <sighs> you became famous. This is the truth, you became famous For with post production. Your, with yeah. the post production tutorials which are great. <laughs> We really yeah. appreciate about the Aki9 learn and so on. I, I To be honest, Kellen, it mm. really depends from project to project. There are projects we did, uh, we've done projects where it's like 5%, and I'm not kidding, 5% 3D. Mm. 
Nice. Um, <laughs> and there's nothing there. And it's yeah. basically clients with a sketch. Not even, yeah, sketch, sometimes not even a sketch. Here you go. Guys, mm -hmm. go for it. Mm -hmm. And other times we've had really good models and even with the same clients, not the same. It's 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 a process. It really depends. We we use the tools that we have at our convenience. I, I hate to be politically correct on this one, but it's really all about the project. And um, again, it really depends. If we can do something in 2D much quicker, and I think in the beginning everything in my brain said that it was 2D is going to be much quicker. <laughs> I think there's been a bit of an evolution as well mm -hmm. to kind of take those tools that we have, like um, like the 3D part of it, and adopt that into certain projects where we can really use it. Uh, I think at the end of the day, we're still very post-production heavy, and that's that's probably account. It can account for 50% of the project, probably 50% mm -hmm. of the time. It used to be a lot more, I think, uh, but yeah, 50% is probably where we're at and it's still quite post-production heavy i mean it's it's one of my passions so we're always going to be quite connected to it uh, and and i guess it's we we tend to look at visuals as visual representations so post-production does enable us quicker quicker in our in our workflow does enable us quicker changes that we mm -hmm. we know can work in that project and that we know can look really good and really bring that to life not to say you you can't go the other way around and do it in 3d i guess it's more what you're adapted to yeah because you know there is some clients they prefer to have some more 3d exactly, and the, exactly. I mean, mostly in the real estate images they need always to move some chairs and you need to respond really quick exactly. so my last question for the night will be um, what do you think about the vr the well i think it's uh it's very interesting and i think it's actually uh one of the next big things that are coming out where we're experimenting with things i think that it's got a lot of potential uh from the stuff we've seen it again it really depends on how things are going to evolve and how the market is going to evolve uh and adapt to this technology i think that there are a lot of especially the bigger companies have invested a lot in this and and it's because it's their you know it's the next big thing it's coming out it's a new revenue stream they can get ahead quite easy and i think that now it's kind of okay they've they've the vr has evolved to a to where it, it can be kind of adapted by the masses let's say that a little more mm. and it's really interesting i mean we we have we have a vibe and it's it's awesome <laughs> we've had yeah, a lot of fun it, with it it's coming anyway i mean it's yeah like yeah wise. it's yeah it, it's it's coming you know it's just like um just like uh, and, you know animation will get easier i mean mm everything is going to gradually get easier right and then that's going to create different problems for different things and it's a matter of getting the content right for vr i think the content and the interaction and the way that you interact and ha and how that all that can be translated into a architectural product i think this is the interesting part that's developing and i think it's solidifying a little more but again i'm not a pro of VR so there are there are there are people who are much better informed than I am but I I mean from experience and what what I've seen it it definitely seems like it's something very interesting. So Pedro Fernandez thanks really really big thanks for the time you spend with us and I <laughs> not a problem to, to catch you soon back again with new questions <laughs> not a problem uh, it's a pleasure all the best uh, to you and also with um cg school uh, i think you have the online cg school yeah and keep up the good work as well <laughs> no and keep up the interviews uh see you've got a, some very interesting artists coming up so definitely um yeah best of luck with everything and it's a pleasure it flew by 